Greetings, greetings, greetings. This is Lisa. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Mm. Today is the 1st of May. And uh, yeah, time is flying and it's May Day, right? It's the time to, it's like May being the hub almost uh, halfway through the year. Hi, Becky. How are you, love? Um, for those of you who do not know me, I, uh, by trade, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, and I am here to have this session of Tuesday's Heal Talk Tuesday to talk about um inspirations affirmations and things to help us become better hi rubik john hello troy so let us begin i'm sitting i have changed positions today i thought why not do something different right it's uh the first of the month it's the beginning and um so i have now sat in where my clients usually sit. This is the recliner where most my clients sit. And I sit right across where you are. So in a way, I have changed positions today. So you can get a feel of um, what a client feels. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. So many people, um, want to come to a hypnotherapist, the want to do therapy, want to experience hypnosis, and yet um, there is this misconception and this small little anxiety of not knowing what transpires once they walk in. So today I'm going to do a little bit of a role play with you. Hi, Mark. Hello. Um, a role play would be like, how does a client feel when they are sitting over here and the questions that I would be asking as if we're having a session. How's that? Um, just by a show of hands, I know you can't show, uh, do a show of hands, but by your emoji or something like that, let me know if you've ever experienced uh, hypnotherapy or any kind of a hypnosis. Um, that you know of, and I'm going to say why you know of. So begin with, let us do some, some concentration and relaxation. So have, sit back, no matter where you are, and enjoy this relaxation. Take a nice deep breath. And hold for three, two, one, and exhale. One more time. And four, three, two, one, exhale. And one more time. And we hold for three, two, one, and exhale. It's interesting, I was just thinking about this, of why did I close my eyes when I was doing the sound, the bowl, and that's a Tibetan bowl, by the way. Um, I think music is something that touches our heart, and sound touches our heart. 
And when we want to feel whatever it is, that sound, in order for it to resonate, it's just like closing my eyes so I can feel it instead of the only look at what is happening so I can hear it and feel it. So let's uh, talk about uh, what happens when a client sits over here and what's going on. Um, and this all came about because I, uh, I was talking to someone and they said, you know, you know so much about your craft, but a lay person does not really understand uh, why they would come to you and they don't understand what happens when they come to you. And it's like having all that. By the way, thank you, Mark. Thank you. So most of the clients who are referred to a hypnotherapist or they find me on Google is because they've heard about uh, hypnosis and uh, how hypnotherapy, which is an internal process, and it's not an external force. This is how I like to say it. And in lay, in uh, academics, uh, instead of talking my language, is like we go in and out of hypnosis every single day, which is another trance state, right? And we do this for golfers. They do this all the time. For um, anyone who is driving a car, we, the moment we sit in the car and we know our destination, we start the car. Nowadays, it's not start the car, it's push a button. But we push that button or start the car and we already know where we're going. So automatically, we go into that automatic state. But when a client comes in here and they sit in this beautiful recliner, my first thing is before they even walk in here into my office, they make a call and they say the issues that they are dealing with, let's say anxiety. And, and, and my question would be anxiety about what? What kind of an anxiety? So an anxiety for taking a test, especially nowadays, uh, students are taking tests. So let's concentrate on stress and anxiety today. And okay, and I can help you with that anxiety. They come in, they fill out the client intake form. And as they are sitting outside, this beautiful reception area, music is in the background, the waterfall, and there is a beautiful scent, either sage, or my lavender scent, or not even Nak Champa. And then this entire aroma, creating this incredible essence of supporting them uh, with sight, with sound, with scent. And the touch is just being around everything and my beautiful money tree and all that, right? And my bamboo and so it's a beautiful setting. Once they come in here, they sit in this recliner and I sit in this chair and we go over the intake form and the questionnaires about their health, about their issues and everything. Now, let's talk about stress. Stress in a way is, you know, I talk about uh, what causes their stress because we all have a threshold for stress. Uh, for some people, if we're talking about test anxiety, there are students and adults who specialize, not specialize, but they are very comfortable in taking a test. And there are ones who dread the day. Does that make sense? Now, I had a client last week that came in and he sleeps absolutely wonderfully. But when it comes to the night before taking a test, he goes into this extreme anxiety, sleepless nights, uh, palpitation, 
his palms get all sweaty and he has a hard time with sleeping and focusing until the next day until he is in the classroom to take the test the moment he sits there he takes the test and he aces it now so for me it's not necessarily about the test it's is the stressor the subject that's what a, it's a process of elimination so i can help my client is it the subject no i know the subject okay so in order for us to understand is it the classroom no is it the teacher no is it uh the school the academics in itself no so what we did we already eliminated the entire subject school being in there even the test taking part of it now now that that's gone so it means there is the morning before the test and the night before and the expectations that starts at approximately noon the day before so what we do is now i have a window by understanding that his anxiety starts the day before this is what happens as he's sitting here i ask him to lean back and i begin guiding him into a state of relaxation and that can be with breath work first hi michael and as he gets to breathe i ask him to place his hand on his tummy so it's not the breath work that we do shallow breathing from our chest but breath work from our abdominal area and it's not here and it's my tummy i have pushed my tummy out and it's the muscles from our abdominal that i ask to expand and it's just like saying show me a nine month pregnant woman or a seven month pregnant woman and we push the muscles of our tummy out which is very hard for people who have not done any breath work or yoga because they're not used to pushing that out we're usually told to suck in the tummy the sucking in right so by doing so it's like and we hold four, three, two, one, and exhale. Even at this very moment, as you are listening to the sound of my voice, if you could just take a few moments to breathe in and out easily and gently, and realize that each and every breath that comes into your nostrils, allow it to come and go all the way and linger into the back of your throat. And when you feel, as you are listening to the sound of my voice, gently close your eyes and allow your eyelids remain closed during the duration of this time. And as you are following me at this very moment, make sure that you are in a safe place that you are not being disturbed. Plus, if you have any stressors of your own or anxiety, I'm going to also help you as you are listening to this to release your own, to let it go. We forget that even as adults, we used to be children. And there is nothing more profound than our imagination and allowing us to visualize, even though I am guiding you. So by visualizing this, you also get to go into a deeper state of relaxation, just allowing yourself to breathe in oxygen and vitality 
And as you exhale, release and let go of any stressors, any worries, any doubt, any pain, hurt. If there is any guilt you're holding on to, even expectations. You see, expectations in itself, expectations that you have placed upon yourself, especially if it is high demand expectations, that becomes overloading and overwhelming and expectations for a higher performance that you must achieve something, especially if it is not for you, if it is for someone else, especially if it is a fear that if your expectations are not met, there is a possibility of a punishment, either real or created by you in your mind. If it is not even a reality, it's a perception. And that fear in itself can be debilitating. That fear in itself creates a block. A block to sleep. A block to perform. A block to excel. And as we dissect the stressor, and I want you to imagine if you happen to have a subject that is causing you stress at this very moment, become one with the idea of your stressor. And allow that come and stand or be right there in front of you. And just place it in front of you as if you can easily touch. And yet we're not touching it. And if that subject, whatever it is that is creating that stress, you bring it all the way gently and easily, close enough, just as close as I am to this screen, right here without touching. See how far it is? I can literally put my hand and do this. So with that, just easily allow it to be right here. And as you become aware of it, I want you to become more a part of it. What exactly is the stress? that it's inside you. Become aware of the feeling as you are here with this. Even though it's not close and yet it's not far. So how are you feeling in your body? By this stress or stressor, this object, subject, person, whatever it is that in your mind is creating the stress right here, not close enough, but right here. And yet it cannot touch you. It cannot hurt you. It cannot do anything because we are here together. I am right here with you. And you have a whole hand. And if you want, you can push it away, but we're not doing that right now. We're just holding space for you. Not for that, for you. And as you are listening, if you are sitting, I want you to be grounded. Mm. I'm moving, so I want you to become more close to me. So, grounded. And I want you to allow every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue in your body 
to become more aware. As a matter of fact, allow every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue from the top of your head all the way down to the tip of each and every one of your toes to relax and become loose and limp and lazy. While you're sitting, while you're listening, while you are focusing on my voice and all the surroundings that are surrounding you, nothing really matters. And yet the stressor, whatever it was, it's still here. So very gently become aware of all the things inside your body. Is it affecting your heartbeat? Mm, become aware of that. How do you feel in your body? How's your pulsation? How's your heartbeat? Are you more comfortable with this ding right here that you can literally put your hand and separate it from you? Now, become more aware of this. Is it moving? Is this thing moving? If it is stagnant, fine. And if you were to give this a shape, what kind of a shape would you give it? If this thing that has caused you stress, does it have a sound? And become aware of it. And see how much power does this thing that is right here, so close to you and yet so far, really have over you or did you give that kind of a power to that did you give this much credence and control to this right and if it's an anxiety of a test is it the test itself if you cannot sleep is it sleep itself that is not coming to you if it is any kind of, uh, let's come up with another anxiety. What is it that we can come up with? Um, um, come on, give me a, what is stressing you? If it is a person, does that person really have control over you right here, right now? And I'm not talking about any time else, but right here, right now. So that when this happens, what happens inside you? What do you do? How do you feel when this thing is right here? And what can you do at this very moment? Now let's go closer. Let's go closer to this thing. And instead of allowing ourselves to become more upset with it we become closer and yet we can still push right i'm closer and yet i can still push myself further back and forward further back and forward further back and forward which means in a way it's like a rubber band you create this rubber band back and forth and if you want to snap it you can and yet you can hold it as far back as you want and the moment you snap it guess what it can go away but not until you figure out why you gave so much control to this fear to this anxiety to this thing that you've made it the Godzilla now if it is not the test itself, it is not the subject, if it is not sleep that comes to us because we easily and gently go to sleep each and every time, we can shut it down because everything goes to sleep. Birds go to sleep, plants go to sleep, humans go to sleep, animals go to sleep. Everything that is alive goes to sleep. And sleep comes to us naturally. So why do we create this anxiety and we go into this turmoil? Is because we are in a constant worry of the expectations we want to create. 
for what has not happened. It's the expectations that we put upon ourselves that we create the stress, the anxiety, because it starts from the inside and then we project it outside. It's like saying driving is stressful. Is it the driving that is stressful? Because if you know how to drive, do you trust yourself being behind wheels? Yes. Do you trust yourself knowing the subject to take the test? Yes. Do you trust yourself that everything that you have learned and incorporated in your mind, either a subject, either driving, either riding in an elevator, or whatever it is, that you believe the stressor is from the outside, do you trust you know it? Yes. Validation number one, my client validated that they trust. They can drive. They can take a test. They know their subject. Wow. So the school is eliminate, eliminated. The problem is eliminated in their mind. Their knowledge and their trust within is eliminated. Now we come to what? Expectations. You see, nothing freezes us up more than our own perceived expectations of what is to occur. That means if I don't do this, if I don't succeed if i don't get this grade if i don't if i cannot breathe inside the elevator if i don't uh, pass this um, competition if i don't when we say all these internal dialogue and it's not so much external that's why we come to hypnotherapists so we can tap into our subconscious mind the internal negative dialogue that analyzes and judges and criticizes and critiques. That's the part we want to open and see why so much of the negative dialogue and critique. So in a way, the internal negativity becomes the judge, the jury, um, and also uh, the prosecutor, right? And everything happens like this, faster than a blinking eye, because everything is like that, 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 that. So we calm them down. Let's breathe and tap in. Now the anxiety in itself. Is it in your body? No. Where in your body is it if you feel it? It's in my chest or in my tummy. Okay, if we were to give it life or a way to speak, what would your tummy say or the pressure that it's in your chest, how does it feel? Can we easily give it a voice? And with this client, it was, I feel sad. You see, there is not a stressor or a fear that is not connected to a feeling. It's all our own feelings that it's not validated, it has not been met, that we somewhere, somehow, without realizing, we go into this punishment mode and create the stress with it. So my dialogue with him was, and where did this sadness come from? How long has it been there? And if you could cradle the sadness and then the dialogue started. 
So with this client, he's been sad for the last two and a half years. And his sadness stemmed from the time a relationship was broke. And that relationship, the girlfriend that he had and he admired so much, went to a different state and a different school and has nothing to do with taking a test. But he remembered it was right before a test that she broke up. And all night, he could not sleep and he was in turmoil. He was all upset and crying. And all he could think about was, what did I do wrong? What did I say? How, how, what happened? So in his mind, all the pressure had nothing to do with the test. You see the process of elimination of the test, of the subject, his trust in his subject, and all the sadness accumulated to those hours cognitively by talking. Maybe he would have taken a long time, but within just an hour, we tapped into his sadness, and he tapped into when it happened. And the night that it happened, two and a half years ago, his heart broke. And it was broken the night before a very um, significant test. And although he aced this test, he had created this, uh, a, a, not a ritual, but created this thing internally that every time there's a test, something is going to happen the night before. So he has created this entire anxiety to stay awake in order for the shoe not to drop. And you see, it's not something conscious, but it was deeply rooted in his subconscious mind. So my client being only 20 years old, and it was at the peak of his adulthood, right, at almost 18 years old, precious, and it means so much, the love, first love, puppy love, special love, that by understanding that, he allowed himself to understand how consciously and subconsciously he had created this you know, this body had done that for him, created this mechanism, created this uh, protective mode. <sighs> by releasing the sadness, by understanding how it happened and how it created this boomerang that each time he had this major test coming up, he would go through this uh, self-punishment in a way that he didn't need. So in a way, we allow this parent side in him, look at two years ago, this younger version of him, and instead of punishing, becoming the prosecutor, he became a better judge in understanding and judging what happened from right here and this stressor that it was right there he went closer and closer and closer and brought it all inside and made that stress by saying to the younger version of himself oh all because of love that hurt but i no longer need to hurt you know why because he likes someone right now and here is the caveat of that. Even though there is someone he likes, he had been hesitant in approaching her, not knowing why, because there is a part of him that was still grieving the other one. It's incredible what our mind does. It's incredible what our body does for us. It safeguards us. It protects us. As I always say, you know, that's the beauty. 
our body, our mind, mind can never ever harm us. It does everything to protect us and shield us. Even though sometimes it comes off as pain, disease, negativity, it's only for us to pay attention. It's only for us to tap within. It's only for us to become more aware of who we are, what we feel, and what I call, what we did, we evoked his sadness, we evoked the issue, and then he came to embrace it. Hmm. Embrace all that had happened, and it was his light bulb, wow factor. And by understanding that, he was ready to evolve and go take his test, right? And we did one more thing. I asked him if he can be a better parent to himself, if his adult self now has more control over all this and he can go to sleep easily and gently and if he can tell his mind to close down shut down the night before a test so that he can feel more refreshed rejuvenated and healthier for the day of the test knowing that he's going to go and ace it again because he is mr high achiever and that's an incredible thing but knowing that it's not a negative way that he's doing all this because I'm so proud of him. He's going to be the best, best, best in what he is going to achieve. So does that make sense? Did I give you a scenario of how easily and hypnosis is just sitting right here. And as I started is like, mm going into this state of relaxation. And while I sit right next to you or to my client, and I, with my voice, guide them into that state of relaxation so they can tap within their feelings, their body, and all the thoughts and ideas and every concept and every image. And without judging, analyzing, and criticizing, just allow it to be. That's it. I used to say, you want the change, be the change. So we become one. And when I ask them, do you still believe that the stressor is right here? He said, it's eliminated. The stressor is eliminated. Why? There is no more stress. That which he thought is no longer there. And I asked them, so in order for us to clear, touch your heart, do you still feel the sadness within you? No. Do you believe you can open your heart and like everything that is happening, even approach this wonderful girl on a date, on a real date. And he said, yes. And I said, and how does your tummy feel? Wonderful. Do you believe you can sleep? Yes. And then I give them two minutes of silence. So they hone all this internally. And when they are ready, guess what? This entire thing, as I am speaking to you, it took us 40 minutes. Now, just imagine me taking a client into that deep, level of concentration and tapping within themselves and becoming so aware right here in this surrounding, safeguarded and supported by me. 
Transformation happens when you are ready. When we are ready to let go of the pain and move towards the joy, the love, the goodness, the happy, we move towards our most dominant thought pattern to the positive, to the light. Thank you all for being here and present. And if you're watching this right here, right now, thank you, Mark. Thank you for all your wonderful comments. You are one of my biggest supporters and each and every one of you. If you believe this session being beneficial to you, if there is any habits or behavior that you want to make a change or someone that you know is ready for the change, by all means, I am here to help you and help the ones, your loved ones. With that, give me a call. Um, I have a 15-minute consultation that is complimentary. And I can be on the phone with you, and then we can do this. You know, um, the biggest joy I have is helping everyone that comes to me or reaches out to me to help you transform for the better. Open heart, expand your mind, and let us transform for the better. My name is Lisa, and this has been a Heal Talk Tuesday. Look forward to seeing you next time. You can PM me. You can message me. I am here for you. Um, and you can also go to my website, healwithin.com. God bless, and I'll see you next week. Share this message, this session with anyone, even on your page. Goodbye.